First Updates Now videos are brought to you by Stryker. Discover why so many first alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their careers, internships, and co-ops. Visit careers.stryker.com forward slash first to learn more. I'm, I'm Caleb Sykes. Uh, I do a lot of statistics and prediction work on uh, Chief Delphi. Um, so I've been kind of I've been observing out here. I haven't been directly involved in much of the, the build of the robot, but it's been just a, a fun environment to, to hang out in. So, um, I'll, let me grab, I have a, a couple of little thoughts that I found, you know, as I was reading through everything. So I'll just read those off, and if anyone has any questions, then I can answer them. Is there a um, microphone on here? Or where's the... Yeah, it's in the camera. Oh, there is one? Okay. I just want to make sure I'm not, I'm not talking to this, this someone in front. Yeah, hey, Chad, say hi to Caleb. Hi. We'll see one come up here, hopefully. It takes a little bit of a delay. Yeah, what's the lag out here? Only about 15 seconds, I believe. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, they're here. Okay. Okay, so yeah, feel free if you have any any questions specifically, yeah, strategy stuff or analytics kind of stuff. That's that's what I've been thinking about a lot in the past little bit because I don't have a robot I'm trying to build. So, um, okay, so just some thoughts I got when I was reading through everything. Um, so for for ranking the. Autonomous points are the second order sort, um, and autonomous points are going to be very continuous, um, meaning like it's not like uh, there's only a couple of points to score in there. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Elvis. It's 21. Worked like half the time. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, so, so because there's a lot of different points you can score in autonomous, a lot of different values you can get out of autonomous, um, I think that that's as far as the sword orders are going to go. You might have very rare occasions where you'll have um, the third order swords uh, come into play, but just in general, if you're looking at ranking, uh, the priority is going to be ranking points, and I think both of these ranking points are going to be fairly difficult particularly the um, energizing the shield generator, I think is going to be incredibly incredibly rare. Um, so I think you'll hit that auto sort pretty often, but I don't think it's uh, for ranking you're going to hit anything beyond that very frequently. Um, let's see. I'll just answer some questions before they disappear. Uh, let's see. How do you see defense playing out this year? I think um, defense, there's going to be a couple of different types of defense this year. I don't think it's as obvious as last year when a team is playing defense or not. Uh, last year it was because we had a rule restriction on you can only have one robot on the other side and the entire alliance's area was condensed all on one side of the field. It was very clear to see who was playing defense, and then the choice was just kind of, do you play man-to-man, -man, just blocking out one robot, or do you, um, like, pick a zone and just kind of hold your ground as much as you can there and block any robots going through there. That was kind of the main types of defense, but this year, you can play defense uh, as teams are, like, loading up over on, um, you know, the, the far side of the field from you, or... Um, you can, as they're trying to do runs through the uh, the shield generator area, uh, you can hit them while they're going through there, or uh, you can try to block them as they're shooting, or, or have a, a tall blocker, or just, if they're not in a protected zone, just, you know, run into them and try to knock, knock their shot off. Yeah, so just defense, I don't think there's, uh, it's going to be as obvious, uh, when teams are playing defense and you're going to see more of uh yes test is good great um you're going to see more defense you could potentially have defense anywhere on the field where wherever robots are, are moving around um i think a good way to do defense uh 
if you are up against a team that can shoot from a variety of spots, um, what you should really do is when you come back to to load up your power cells um, before you go all the way on the other side of the field, just you know run into the other robot on your on your route going over there because that only costs you a second or two. But if they were in the midst of positioning, that's going to cost them you know five or six seconds to reposition themselves to to get the shot off. So um, I think. I think uh, if you're up against a robot that's not shooting from a protected zone, that's a really good way uh, to play defense, but it doesn't have to be a full-time engagement kind of thing. It can just be while you're you know, going on and off. And similarly for um, the shield generator, when you're, cause there's gonna be, that's gonna be where robots are going through. Like some of them will be doing the trench run, but some of them will be going through the shield generator. Particularly, you wanna look for um, robots that you think are better scorers than you, if you can hit them while they're on their routes, you know, it it stops both of you, slows both of you down, but if they're on average a better scorer than you, um, you're adding more value to the to the winning margin by slowing them down, you know, than you're losing from slowing yourself down. So uh, that's another way to run into it. I don't know, I think for, if you're gonna have a dedicated defender, uh, it's probably best to have someone um, over by the, um, on your near side of the field to you, and that robot would pick up any missed shots and throw them, you know, as far over as they can without getting penalties and, uh, just clear out that zone and block out any robots that are, uh, shooting from unprotected areas. Maybe if you have a tall blocker, you can block them if they're shooting from the trench run. Um, otherwise... Uh, also, and then yeah, just just a just a ball clearer out if because you don't want to get the the cascading effect if the other team scores 15 balls on you that you would your human player would have to start dumping balls out uh, that are easy to score for them. Just having a dedicated robot right there that can relieve some of that pressure and get clear those balls out to the other side is going to be a, a valuable asset. Uh, okay. That's a long, long response. There's a, there's a lot of different ways you can play defense this year. It'll it'll be interesting to see how it all comes out. Uh, let's see. So uh, L. Bassett says, are there going to be any particular styles of robots this year, in your opinion? What types of robots do you think will make up a good alliance? Um, I definitely think there's going to be styles of robots. I, I think we're going to distinguish robots by their height, uh, if they can do the trench run or not, um, and if they're a transformer, if they if they can, you know, extend up higher and, and shoot from up high while still doing the trench run, or if they just stay low the whole time. Um, and there's also going to be full time, you know, tall robots. Uh, so I think that's going to be a big robot archetype is whether what their height is. Um, another one is going to be their primary shooting location. I kind of think there's going to be four potential um, kind of main shooting locations there's going to be right up against the um, right up against the uh, I want to call it the tower but it's not the tower it's the the target zone uh, in that little protected zone where you can just get right underneath and do some layups or uh, for the balls there's also the near edge of the of the trench run you know on on your offensive side of the field so you could shoot from there because that's a protected zone and that's a reasonable shot um there's also just kind of generally you can shoot anywhere from your on your offensive side of the fields uh so not in one of the protected zones but maybe if if there's no one nearby you can just take a shot from from anywhere over there and then i think there's going to be the the long shot robot from the the far side of the trench run on the other side of the control panel so i think those are the main kind of four areas that we'll see robots shooting from um so i think i think those are the two main kind of dimensions of of a robot that distinguishes how they how they interact with with the power cells at least there's also ability to do the control panel or not and climbing ability and and you know if you can balance yourself or if it's just a passive climb um but uh i think i think the the height of the robot and the 
look, their primary shooting location are going to be big distinguishing factors between between robots, and and those will those will interact with each other also. Like if you're if you're only shooting from the far side of the fields, then maybe you you can just be a tall robot and you don't ever have to do the the trench run because you don't need that that route. Um, let's see. Oh, so so yeah, I I missed that question, but uh, Jobbers J's twelve said, "How valuable do you think it will be to be able to go through the trench run?" Um, I think it depends on your your robot type, um, if uh, and where where you're shooting from. It also depends on your your alliance maker. So this is this is something I I mentioned um, on on the fun show last night. Is I think um, I think. An optimal alliance will will have at least one trench running robot. I, I think you're going to be in a little bit of trouble if you have three um, tall robots because you just lose that entire route to go across the field, and it'll be easier for uh, defenders to to come in and block them. Um, so having at least one is important. I think two is you still get some value in having a, a second trench run robot. Uh, a short one that can do the trench run. Uh, once you hit three, though, I kind of think the third robot being a being a short robot. I don't think that third one really adds too much value to your alliance at that point because you're you're not going to have three teams consistently uh, going through there. So it it depends on what what alliance you're in, and I think in playoffs it'll be easier to select um, alliances that do that. I I kind of don't think if, if you have a tall robot, I, I think you'll be able if you're if you're good at other aspects. I think you'll be able to find an alliance with other you know short robots, and that should be fine. But if you go tall, you you do run the risk of getting potentially three tall robots in a match, which will which will hurt you. But I kind of think that's going to be pretty rare. I think teams in general like to be short. I think like if you think like 2016, which had a similar similar kind of dynamic or, or 2013 where you you could be short to gain more access to parts of the field there were there were very few tall robots I, I can't think of hardly any matches offhand where you had three tall robots in 2016 and nobody could do the low bar you know or three tall robots in in uh 2013 and nobody could go under the pyramid so you know i i think you're you're probably fine if you go tall and there's some there's some good advantages to to going to doing that um so it's certainly certainly something to, to consider there but you are you are sacrificing that trench run um cycle when you do that so something to keep in mind okay um what do you think will be the winning factor between high level play and the best of the best uh um Best of the best in high level play. Ball flow. Ball flow. Uh, star starvation stuff, yeah. I think that's a uh, that's one. I think I think if I think I mean we have to see as as more robots get built, but I think if you could have a robot that could consistently make shots from the far side of the trench run, um, that would be a huge a huge asset to, to any alliance that that you're on it's you don't even have to you wouldn't even have to be short necessarily to get under the the trench um i'm not sure at at what level how how difficult see what difficulty that has if that's something that we'll only see in best of the best play or, or high level play but um yeah i think i think if you can do something if you have a robot that can do that you're you're really set because you can the the routes are shorter and uh even if you miss a couple of them the balls end up on the other side so that's that's something i'm interested in and i'm interested in in looking out for okay what type of robot will seed first a robot that can shoot over the trench run for quick cycles or one that can go under it um so i think i'm kind of thinking that to seed well, I I think the the energizing with to get 49 balls uh, plus the control panel, I think that's going to be a really tough ranking point. I don't, at least, 
at least up until championships or district championships, I I don't really see that coming into play super often. So I think um, focusing on getting if you can get the if you can have a climber that can balance and work with a uh, another robot that just passively climbs uh, and you can climb along with them and balance with them. I think that's the you're going to see a lot more of those ranking points. So those are going to be really important for seeding first. So doing that and uh, just, you know, winning as, as much as you can uh, is, I think, going to be the, the key thing you need for, for seeding first. Um, I, don't, I don't know that... I, I mean, if you can shoot over the trench for quick cycles, I, I think you're, you're going to be set. I, I don't know how feasible that's, that's going to be. But, yeah, if you, can, if you can shoot over the trench and score, I, I think you're... You're well on your way to seeding first. Um, D uh, says, I feel like this game would best be played 2v2 or 1v1. Um, well, I mean, if you have multiple robots balancing, you know, at, at, for for the climb uh, to get it level, I, I think that's more fun with, with more robots than, than less. I don't know how often we'll see three of them. Um, I don't know 2v2 or, or 1v1. I, I kind of feel like with the field size we have, 3v3 is is fine. 3v3 is also nice because you can get, you can send one robot over on defense, and then you have two offense, one defense, which I think is kind of a good balance. If you if you had one ro one offense, one defense, I feel like that would be a little bit too slow. Um, but with two offense, one defense, it's it's still an offensive game, with, which people kind of like. But there is interaction between the alliances which which is also good so i kind of i kind of like 3v 3v3 in in general but maybe if the field were scaled down uh, a little smaller or something then then maybe 2v2 or 1v1 uh, let's see points wise which scoring location for shooting will be the most viable for a team with fewer resources wanting to be competitive uh, right up against the target zone uh, into the level one goal. That's that's what I would really recommend if you were if I were on some of the teams I've been on in in the past uh, with with fewer resources. Um, I think uh, I think forty nine balls to get the that uh, that energized shield is is going to be super rough. But if you can. If you can just get those balls, because it doesn't matter where you score them, if you score them high, high or low, um, getting those in, and then you can get all the points from the control panel if you're scoring a lot of balls there too. So, I, I think, just quickly picking up a bunch of those balls and just dumping them in, um, that's that's really what I would recommend if you're if you're a, a low resource team, and that's, I I would love to build that robot. I I don't know how many will will see that do that, but. Should be should be good. Uh, we know the stage three RP will be difficult. What do you think about the other bonus RP's difficulty? The for the climbing, um, it's it's certainly easier than the than the stage three. Um, I would say I would say the way uh, with with the frame uh, restrictions, you can only go 12 inches outside your robot. I think it's going, it is going to be very rough to, to lift up another robot with you to do the, the balance. Um, so I think the way we're going to see it most frequently is one robot has a passive climb and goes up, and then the second robot climbs and then has uh, some mechanism to, to level the, the hangar uh, while it's up there. Uh, or they take a couple of tries and try to position themselves on the ground before before climbing to to get the the level. Uh, I think that's the main route we're going to see it. You need two good climbers in a match uh, for that, and one of them to have some kind of leveler. So it's it's going to be it's going to be tough. It's going to be I don't know. I feel like similar scale as the climb RP. Uh, in in last year was it's it's a, a a tough challenge to get two robots up there and and to balance them. Uh, okay, we're getting a lot of a lot of stuff. Uh, do you think it's worth it to activate stage three? If you can if you can score that many balls, 
then yeah. I mean, you're you're scoring power cells most of the match anyway. So if you get that far, then definitely go for a stage three. And you get you get extra points from manipulating the control panel also. So if you, yeah, if you if you get that far, certainly do it. Min. Hmm. My. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Let me get a few more questions here, and then we're going to wrap up. Uh, minimum competitive concept, I would say uh, able to pick up balls quickly or, or even, even load the balls from the loading station and dump them into the low goal. Uh, I think that's really important. I don't think control panel is important for minimum competitive concept. Um, if you do that, you're not going to get a chance to use it very often because you're not going to have a ton of matches where there's enough balls to be scored to, to make it worthwhile to manipulate the control panel. Um, so I think quick, quickly picking up balls, quickly shooting them into the low goal is really important. And I think a, a quick climber would be, would be very nice also. Um, just a passive climber. Uh, do you think viable strategy to, for a support bot to pass balls across the trench to other teams in your alliance? Um, I just build a shooter and just, well, mm, I don't know. Passing balls always seems like a better concept than it is in my experience. It, uh, like trying to actively pass them. I, I kind of am more like you should just try to build a shooter and just try to shoot them. And if you miss, then they're close. Um, I think, I think it's, I think it's something you could, you could maybe do. Um, you certainly having a robot to make sure that you don't have more than 15 balls behind that you're for your human player to deal with, uh, Clearing those out so the other lines doesn't get them in their zone, I, I think is important. Um, Minnesota play level, uh, how many climbers would you expect to see at the Duluth tournaments, percentage-wise? How many climbers? I, I think almost every team is going to build a climber. I I think you're going to see, uh, I don't know, 30 or 40 percent success rate on climbs. Um, how do you think strategy is going to evolve throughout the season? Uh, robots are going to get better. Uh, I think uh, it's it's hard to say. Um, I think I think you'll see new types of defense. Uh, I think I think. Uh, I think the robots that try to shoot from anywhere, from arbitrary positions, are going to get knocked around too much, and you're going to see less of that as the season goes on. Um, I think uh, you're going to see maybe more um, coordinated effort to try to overload the the other alliance's human players, so that the balls uh, they have to dump balls out for your for your team to get. Uh, that might be something you you see develop. Um, yeah, it's 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 hard to see. It, it's hard to know what the what the starting point exactly is going to be and and how it's all going to progress through the season. Particularly because there's no bag this year, so who knows how how much that's going to change the the meta. Uh, let's see. I think. Okay. Yeah, I think I think that's most of these questions. All right. Well. Thanks for thanks for being out here, guys. Uh, if you have any more questions, you can throw them in chat. I'll just keep an eye on the chat here, and I can answer them in chat if you have any other questions. But we're gonna transition over to something else here now. So, see ya. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com/firstupdatesnow, or by subscribing at twitch.tv/firstupdatesnow. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.